Hi everyone, and welcome back to another Magical Voxel video. In this one, we will be covering materials. So let's go ahead and jump straight into it. The first one we have here is the fuse, and this is the most basic one you're starting with. Anytime you make a new object, it will always be set to the fuse, and it's pretty simple and basic. So let's go ahead and go to metal. This is where things start getting interesting. You can go ahead and increase the metallic slider right here to make it more of a metal. And obviously you have roughness settings you can play around with. Less rough, obviously if you set to zero, will give it more of a mirror look, for instance. If I do this, you can see that I can easily see the box right here. But if I increase the roughness, you can't really tell what I'm looking at anymore. Going back to the original object here, let's go ahead and bring the metallic shader down and increase the IOR. The IOR is basically a setting that causes the material to react to the light around it, especially the skybox. So the skybox is white, so this will be lighter in color if you increase the IOR. And if you bring it all the way down, it will be less bright and more true to the original palette color. Now specular is the way this material will react towards other objects, specifically their color. So right now specular is set to zero, and if you increase it all the way to the right, the colors on the side right here that are emitted from these two objects is slightly brighter. It's a little hard to tell, however if you go between the uh, video back and forth you can see that there is a difference between setting this from max setting to the minimum setting. Let's next take a look at emit and as the name suggests it emits a light. So emission is how far the object will emit the light. So if you set it to 100% you will see that the light will emit uh, out a certain radius. However because the power is set to zero it's not really emitting that far. So if you set it to 1, you can see it's starting to emit some. And if it emits 2, it emits more. 3, it emits more. And then 4, obviously, is the max. So if you set both of this to max, you can see that it quite it goes out quite far. Um, obviously, this is blindingly bright. And um, I don't usually do that. So it's usually set around 2. And you can play with the emission settings and stuff like that to get what you'd like. Now the LDR represents what this is doing. So if I set this like 5, even just to 1, you can see that it changes what the original object looks like. It still gives out an emission and light, however the actual block resembles more of the palette color. As you can see, setting it to zero, it looks like a very bright white light. However, you set it to uh, anything but zero, it'll look more like the palette color. And you can play around with this, obviously. If you set this to 100, you can see that it even looks brighter for some reason. However, it doesn't look as bright as if it was set to nothing. The next one we want to take a look at is glass. And right now, you can't really tell that this looks like glass and that's because we haven't changed any of these settings here so to make it look more like glass you want to obviously change this which is transparency um, now it's starting to look a lot like glass and you can see through it and it looks really cool however it doesn't really look like the glass you see on windows and cars and such and that's because we have it set to absorb media which is basically uh, trapping the light and keeping it dark but if you set to scatter, it will bounce the light off and create this cool effect here. And you can obviously play with these settings here. This density slider indicates basically how thick the glass is in a sense. Because if you increase it, you can see it's getting very hard to see through. If you decrease it in conjunction with transparency, it becomes very clear and you can see through it pretty well. The IOR is like the refractiveness, and it's kind of hard to tell, but if you increase the IOR, it's starting to look quite clear, and it looks kind of funky. And this is better represented if 
I put something in, which I'll do now. So I currently have a blue cube in this uh, object that is glass. And look, if you increase the IOR, it does some weird stuff to it. Max settings, it like causes like some cool looking like it's like encased in the glass. And if you decrease it, it creates a really cool effect that you can use to mess around and achieve some really cool things with. The emissive media basically illuminates the glass based off the palette color. So now I can give it like a cool glowy effect and you can increase the intensity of that by increasing the density of the glass. So if you don't want it to give off much light, you can decrease it by quite a lot. And if you want a lot, you can obviously turn the density all the way up to 100%. Taking a look at Blend, it combines both the metal and the glass material together. And this can be used to achieve things that you want it to both be metallic looking, but also uh, glass as well. And this is something that's really cool that you can totally mess around with and create some really cool effects for. And of course, just like the glass, you have both absorb media, scatter media, and emissive. Lastly, we have cloud, and this one is pretty cool. Its current settings is set to absorb media, and it has this sort of cool, almost like a hint to it. And this is something that will change based off of the color you choose. So for instance, if you make it very saturated, you can see it has like really cool effects happening. When you get closer to the edges, the light, the color changes. So it's like more this aqua color and the deeper you go becomes more of a lapis into a blue color. And this is something that's completely different from if you change the scatter. If you change the scatter, it looks more like it's a cloud. And as the picture suggests, that's correct. Increasing density obviously increases the thickness of the cloud. Whereas if you decrease it, it will make it a lot less thick. And just like the blend in glass, you have a scatter, or sorry, emissive media. And this will give light into the uh, cloud material and can be used to achieve certain effects that you couldn't have gotten with the blend or the glass. And the cool thing about Magical Voxel is um, because it re it's rendering in real time and depending on your computer, it could be relatively quickly. It's very encouraged to um, go ahead and just play with the settings here to achieve what you would want. For instance, if you wanted to make something like a mirror, obviously you'd go into either metal or glass and play with the roughness and the metallic look to achieve that type of look. And depending on how well this video does, I plan on making a more practical use of this tutorial and showing the examples of what each material could be used for in your scenes. A couple things I didn't talk about is the subsurface scattering. So on both glass, or sorry, on glass, blend, and cloud, there's this last option called subsurface scattering. And this one is quite weird. Um, it kind of like changes the color and how the shadows work on the object compared to the other settings. Now, obviously with cloud, there's a huge difference compared to just seeing nothing and seeing a lot of stuff. Um, to me, it looks like it kind of like makes it more like a tuned style kind of slime look um, compared to like, for instance, diffuse. If you go from diffuse to even just glass, uh, blend or cloud, it changes the color of it as well as like just the shade uh, of the shadows, how it's emitted. So that's something that you can create some cool things for. And also uh, phase. This is something I don't really mess around with. I haven't really noticed any big changes playing around with the settings. As you can see, I'm changing the settings here and it's not really doing anything. So I don't really touch this. For instance, with the subsurface scattering, 
you can see that there is um, for this one it's the cloud subsurface scattering and then this one's just normal diffuse you can see that it reacts to the light differently this one has a lot more shine to it and there's a lot more clear cut shadows whereas this one it almost looks like everything is almost averaged out you still have some hard shadows here and there but you can definitely tell that even though both of these are the same color this one is a lot more darker and it looks like the edges are more smoothed out that pretty much sums up materials i will also be leaving a file on my patreon that will show each of these materials and some of the parameters for each of them that so that you guys can see uh, what is what as a more visual comparison between the uh, different materials but with that i uh, hope this tutorial has helped and i'll catch you all in the next one